everybody, welcome back to the channel of Jimmy's Promo. Today we'll talk about the 20 settings to change immediately the moment you get yourself the Galaxy Note 10 and the Note 10 Plus. Now, if you are brand new here at the channel of Jimmy's Promo and you own a Samsung Galaxy device, don't forget to hit on that subscribe button as well as the bell for notifications so you get notified for future videos. And don't forget about that playlist tab on the very top to check out all the videos I've made so far for the Galaxy Note 10 and the Note 10 Plus. Now the first setting to change once you get the Galaxy Note 10 or the Note 10 Plus will be what happens when you press the side key. Now on the left hand side you have your volume rocker and the side key. It's not known as the power key nor Bixby. It is a multifunctional button that you're able to customize and change for your own needs. So one of the ways you're able to change what happens with the side key is by pulling down your notifications panel, clicking on that power button and head over into side key settings. Now through here, when you first get your phone, it's probably set up for Wake Bixby, but not everybody uses it to wake up Bixby when you do a press and hold. Usually you might be used to pressing and holding to go inside of your power key menu, which is a way you can either restart or turn off your phone. Now also on the top, you can also change what happens when you do a double press. Now when you first get your phone, it's always set up to do the quick launch camera, and this is probably the best option for you. You can also have it to where if you press it once, it can open up Bixby if you like to have both Bixby and the power key menu. But I would suggest doing your camera because you never know when you want to take a picture or a video and you don't want to unlock your phone, go to the application and so on and so forth. Or you can actually go through and open up a completely different application. If there's a different application or service or game that you use on the daily and it's multiple times and you don't really need it to be the camera, maybe you have your shortcut key on your lock screen to be a camera, then you can open up any other application of your desire. But I'm gonna keep mine right over here for a quick launch camera and then the power key menu. Now the other way you can go inside of this menu setting here is by pulling down the notifications panel clicking the settings icon, and then you're gonna scroll down to where it says advanced features, and then inside of advanced features, you have side key. But the first one I showed you, which is just a simple way of you know clicking the power key, go into the settings, this is probably the easiest and fastest way to get there. The second setting to change is inside of your camera, and this is talking about the aspect ratio of your photos. Now, right out of the box, it is set up for the four by three ratio. I would suggest moving it over to that 16 by nine. It's a way that when you take an image, it's gonna be this entire shot. You can see how it is a longer rectangle, uh, but if you do move it over into that you know, four by three ratio, it shrinks it down. You capture less in your sensor, uh, especially if you are taking a picture with the ultra wide lens, it makes a huge difference just by keeping it over into that 16 by nine. You can see how it extended, you know, what is gonna be inside of your shot. Now, if you are somebody who posts a lot of images inside of Instagram, you are able to move right over into the Instagram, you know, shooting mode. So this way it's set up for Instagram. Also, if you don't wanna shoot it in Instagram and you just want it to be in regular photo, when you take a picture, once you upload it to Instagram, it'll move it over into that four by three ratio for you. It's just a simple way to make sure that you get everything in your shot. Now that you've done it with your rear camera, make sure that you move over to to your front facing camera and do that exact same change. Move it over into that 16 by nine. Setting change number three is staying inside of the camera, but we're gonna move over into the settings on the top left hand side. Now inside of the settings, you're gonna scroll down to where it says pictures as previewed. So it saves selfies as they appear in the preview without flipping them. Now, if you're looking at yourself through a camera sensor, it's gonna be flipping you automatically, meaning that it's almost like you're looking inside of a mirror. So that means if you're wearing a shirt or a hat or really anything, it's gonna be flipped kind of reversed. So what I mean by this is let's say that we keep uh, this setting turned on right here, which is the same way it is out of the box. Let's head inside of the selfie camera. So I'm just gonna take a fast picture. And what you're gonna see here is that I am wearing a shirt. You can see how Nike is spelled backwards uh, and also Google is spelled backwards as well. You can also see in the back over here that my subscriber number is also backwards. So if you are at a landmark, everything is gonna be backwards if you were to take a selfie. But if you move over back inside of your settings, scroll down to where it says pictures as previewed and you turn this off, then this is where it's gonna look the way that it's supposed to. So let's say that we take the same photo 
So we did that. Uh, once you go inside of the image here, you can see how Nike is spelled the same way. Uh, my my tattoo is where it's supposed to be, you know, on the on the left side of my chest. You also have Google that's on the very top that is spelled correct. And also my subscriber number is right the right way. Everything is the way it's supposed to be. Uh, everything looks well. When you look at this one, it just kind of, I don't know, to me, this looks goofy. Setting change number four will be dealing with your S Pen. So all you'd have to do is hover the S Pen over the screen, click on the S Pen button, and this is where you can change your Air Command shortcuts. Now, right off the gate, you can see that there is some there already, but one of the nice things you can do is you can press and hold on any of these and you can move them in any order you would like. So if there's some of these that you use just a little bit more than the others, you can bring them up. Also, you can see how there is a plus icon. Now, right out of the box, I believe there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think there's seven or eight uh, shortcuts that's on the uh, right hand side, but you're able to go all the way up to 10. So let's say that we click on those. You can see that the most shortcuts you can have is 10, but it's really easy for you to either add them and also delete. So I'm gonna keep myself with right around seven. These are actually the ones that I use. Coloring is actually really fun. We can get into that in, into uh, more detail with future videos. And you can do a ton of stuff with Smart Select. Now for me, Smart Select will have to be second. That's one that I do all the time. And then it kind of you know goes down uh, descending of what I actually use in general. So setting change number five, we are still dealing with the S Pen. So let's head over into the settings for the S Pen. And this is where you can change what happens when you remove the S Pen from the phone. So if the S Pen was in your phone, the moment you pull it out, what would you like it to pop up? You can either have it pop up air command, you can also have it create a note or do nothing. So let's say that you're somebody who creates a lot of notes and almost every time you pull this out, you wanna create a note, you can choose this option right there. Now for me, I'm one of these people that uses the air command a lot. There's a lot of shortcuts inside of there. You can almost make any application a shortcut. So it's a fast way of getting inside of any application you would like. Um, or if you want it to do nothing, the moment you pull out the S Pen, you can also have it do nothing. So maybe you're somebody who pulls out the S Pen and you're just using it to touch the screen, to navigate throughout the screen, play with applications, whatever, then you can have it do nothing. So this is one of those things that you wanna change right away because it is something that you do pull out, hopefully on the daily basis. Uh, so it's gonna be one of those first things to change. The next setting to change will still be dealing with the S Pen and it's gonna be dealing with what happens when you press and hold on the S Pen button. So once you pull out your S Pen, what's gonna pop up when you do a press and hold? So right out of the gate, it will be set up for your camera. It's another way that you can take a picture, you know, pretty much right away. So if you open up your little air command, click on the settings one more time, then this is where you can go inside of air actions and it's gonna be this first option here. What happens when you hold down the S Pen? So you can have it open up maybe smart select. So if you already have the S Pen out and you're, you're you know, checking out a website, but now you wanna take a little smart select, when you press and hold, it'll pop up with this option right there. Or maybe you write on the screen a lot. You can have it pop that up. Uh, maybe you do a lot of things with Snapchat. So if you do a press and hold, it'll open up Snapchat. Uh, maybe you play a lot of Crowd City or Tune Blast or any of these other games or applications or you use maps a lot, uh, press and hold on the S Pen button and it'll open up this application as well. Setting change number seven is not specific to the Galaxy Note series, but it's something super important so you don't lose your photos. Now, I always back up everything on Google. So you wanna go inside of that Google folder, click on the photos, and you can see right here that these two have already been uploaded today. So what you wanna do is click on that little menu on the top left-hand side, click on settings, and then inside of settings, go to backup and sync. Now inside of here, you wanna make sure that your upload size is high quality. If you put it as original, it's gonna be the full resolution of the image, but you have a limited storage. If you just keep it as high quality, the most important thing is that you at least have it and it's a free unlimited storage. Um, you can do this with your photos as well as videos with the cellular backup. Now out of the box, this one is set up to only do photos. So it's up to you and also your data if you would either like to have videos being uploaded via the cellular network, which this is a way that you'd be able to turn it on. If you want it to be uploaded via Wi-Fi, then you can just keep it off and the moment you get home or connected to the Wi-Fi at the hotel or wherever you're at, then everything will be uploaded. So this way you never lose any of your photos. Setting change number eight is being able to do this, doing a swipe down on the screen to pull up your notifications panel. Now, right out of the box, it'll open up your application tray. So in order to do this, press and hold anywhere on the screen that is empty. 
and then click on home screen settings. Now inside of home screen settings, this is where you have the option right here for swipe down for notifications panel. So you'll see here just how easy it is. I mean, this right now is off. So no matter what I do up or down, it's going to pull up my application tray. But maybe if I'm just holding on to the phone like this and I get a notification, maybe I don't want to go all the way up to the very top just to pull it down. It's a really simple, easy, uh, fast way that you'd be able to do it. You just go inside of your home screen settings, do the swipe down for notifications panel. So this way, anywhere that you swipe on the screen, it doesn't matter. Uh, it'll pull down the notifications panel. So this way you can see, you know, who just texted you and as well as change your quick settings on the top. Setting change number nine is playing around with your navigation bar on the bottom. So you can see here that mine is dealing with press. I have the back, home, as well as resets. Now, if you like to use gestures, this is how you're able to change it. Pull down the notifications panel, click on the settings icon, and then head over into display. Now underneath display, you're gonna scroll down to where it says navigation bar, and then this is how you're able to manage this. Let's say that you would like it to still be the navigation buttons, but maybe you're set up to maybe a left-handed person, um, or maybe you owned LG before this or some of the other uh, manufactured devices. You can have it to where it's back home recents, uh, but Samsung is usually set up like this, which is the recents back uh, or the recents home and back. And the reason why I like this one is because I am right-handed and a lot of times I just wanna hit the back button and it's the, f the, the closest and nearest icon that I can press. Now the other thing you can do is you can do your full screen gestures. Now inside of gestures, you can either have on or off your hints. So this is where you have your swipe up, uh, for any of those buttons from before. So let's say that you don't want your little hints, then you can turn this off. Now you will not have those lines on the bottom, but still, it's still gonna work the same way. If I swipe up on the right-hand side, it's gonna be the back button. If I swipe up from the middle, it's gonna go back to home. Swipe back right over here, it's gonna be recent. So if you want your navigation bar, you know, to have your hints, you can have them turned on. And you can also block gestures with the S Pen. So you can see here that I can go back with the S Pen, but maybe you would like to block that so now once you turn this on, you're not able to go back or home or recent or anything like that, but you might as well keep it. I mean, you have your S Pen, it might as well work with everything. So for me, I'm somebody who uses the navigation buttons. The next setting to change is dealing with your app grid. So this is dealing with your home screen layout, also your application layout. So you can see here that mine might have, you know, quite a bit more spaces and room for all the widgets, the applications and my Google search bar. Same thing with my application tray. You can see how there's a lot more that's being filled and set up on each page. When you first get the Galaxy Note 10 Plus or the Note 10, you're gonna see that you're pretty limited. It's pretty small. It kind of looks like a phone that's set up in easy mode. And so I'm not really a big fan of that. So I'm gonna show you how you can change that. So if you head inside of your uh, home screen settings, this is where you can change your grid. So your home screen grid, this is the way it's set up from before. This for me kind of looks dated, I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, you can really go with any of these here, but I've set mine up right here. So this way I have more room for everything. Uh, the applications basically kind of get just a little bit smaller and you can see it's already applied, so I can't apply it. Uh, then you can also do the same thing with your apps screen. So originally it's set up like this. It's There's just so many screens. I don't need all of that. Um, so I move it over into that five by six. It brings it all the way down and just it cleans it up just amazing and you want to hit on apply uh, the moment that you use both of those now that you've done that what you'd want to do is head back inside of your application tray and then on the top right hand side this is where you go to if you have the option clean up pages the clean up pages will kind of get rid of all the extra spaces and then you hit on sort and then you want to put it in alphabetical order so this way it's just really easy for you to find all your applications because sometimes you really don't know the order in which they were downloaded and putting in alphabetical order just kind of makes a little bit more sense. The next setting to change is putting it inside of dark mode. So on the very top, you're gonna to see the option right here for night mode or dark mode. Uh, originally, it's gonna be set up, I believe, like this. I believe it's all white. It's kind of a bright you know, area. This is the same way it's set up for messages and phone and everything else. But you can move it over into night mode so this way it just looks nice, a nice contrast, it's black. Um, it'll also save you some of your battery life but you can also turn it on with a schedule. So maybe you want it to be light during the day, and then you, maybe you want it to be a little bit easier on your eyes and you, and you can have it set up as scheduled. And underneath here, you can have it scheduled to where, you know, if it's a sunset to sunrise, but I usually do the custom schedule. So right around seven o'clock um, till maybe 7 a.m. the next day is when you can have it turned on. But me personally, 
I always have mine turned on. So I'm gonna have the whole schedule thing turned off, uh, having it turned on right now, because I like to have it actually 24 seven uh, inside of night mode. The next setting to change is putting your brightness level right here on the very top once you pull it down once for your notifications panel. Usually you'd have to pull it down twice and it's on the very bottom. So in order for you to add this, once you pull it down twice, you can see this little down arrow. Once you click on the down arrow, this is where you can show the control on the top. Now, right off the bat, when you first get your phone and you pull it down once, it's not gonna be there. Pull it down twice and you finally have it. But maybe you wanna make a change manually, you know, right at that moment in time. This is where you can do it extremely fast just by turning that option on. And once you pull it down once, then you're able to change it. And the other nice thing is that once you press and hold, you can really be anywhere on the screen to make this change once you tap on it right away. The next setting to change will be dealing with your screen timeout. So if you go inside of your settings, go down to display, and then you're gonna scroll down to where it says screen timeout. Now I put mine right around five minutes, sometimes even two minutes is perfectly fine, especially you know when I'm shooting videos like this, I don't want it to turn off really fast with that 30 seconds. I believe out of the box it's set up for 30 seconds, uh, but sometimes you just, you know, you might walk away from your phone for about a minute. You come on back, it's already turned off, it's timed out, and now you have to go back in your phone, put in your credentials and things like that. So I would set it up as probably two minutes or five minutes. So it'll give you a little bit of leeway if you do walk away from your phone. And now that we're still inside of the display settings, this is where you can turn on settings for your blue light filter. So I have mine set up as a custom schedule. I don't want it to be turned on now, uh, but you are able to change how much opacity is gonna be there. You know, how much of it do you kind of want to take away from all those blues? Because really the blue light filter, this is pretty much, um, you know, it's a way that it helps you relax your eyes at night. So I kept mine right around here. I might put it even right there. Um, we don't need to have it turned on right now, but I would say turn it on as a schedule and put it on about an hour or hour and a half before you go to bed. So if you go to bed at 10 p.m., put it for 8.30 or nine. So for me, mine starts off at 11 p.m. and it ends at 11 or 7 a.m. So this way the blue light filter is turned on, it's not suppressing the melatonin. So then this way I'm able to go to bed just a little bit easier. Now again, still inside of display, head down to your screen resolution. Now out of the box, it is set up for the full HD plus, but you can go to the maximum, which is the WQHD plus, which is the best resolution. If you're watching videos and playing games and all that good stuff, then this will be the best bet for you. Now, if you do want to have just a little bit better battery life, uh, which if you did watch my battery life video where I can get 24 hours of using this thing with an eight hour screen time use, which is pretty crazy, um, I did have it set up for the full HD plus. So I won't get a full 24 hours and eight hours of screen use with the WQHD, but you can definitely get it with this one. So it's really gonna be up to you, uh, you know, how hard you use your phone. So if you're gonna be using it for about four or five hours in the day and the screen is on that whole time, you might as well use this one right here, uh, which is the WQHD Plus. The next setting to change will be dealing with security on your phone. So if you pull down the notifications panel, click on the settings icon, and scroll down to where it says biometrics and security. So this is where you do wanna put in a facial recognition as well as your fingerprints. So setting up your face is actually super simple. Once you click on face recognition, you'll type in your code if you have a screen code, and then you just literally point it at your face and it's a way to unlock your phone. Now inside of fingerprints, this is where we'll go inside of here and I'll show you just a little bit more of what you're able to do. Once you put in your pin or anything you have set up, then this is where you can set up your fingerprints. And if you like to you know, add more fingerprints, you click this button right here. You also have other options for Samsung Pass and Samsung Pay. Uh, so then this way, if you do use Samsung Pay, you just use your fingerprint to make your payments. You can also set up multiple fingerprints. Uh, so I have one set up for the right and also one for the left. So to add a fingerprint, you just go right inside of over here. And then this is where you wanna scan the fingerprint. And so here is my tips and tricks for this one. First off, hold the phone as you always do. And then just place your phone or your thumb onto the phone. Do it about three times then start rotating the phone uh, this is just a way so you know any way that you were to unlock your phone if it's sitting you know even if it's upside down uh, you'd still be able to unlock your phone you go all the way through until it says a hundred percent now the other nice thing you can also do is you can set these up as profiles so this one's set up for the right thumb and the left thumb but technically you can actually scan one profile with both thumbs so maybe this could actually technically be saved as myself and then the fiance. So let's say that we go through and we add in a fingerprint. So how this works is you go right, left, right, left. 
and then I'm gonna rotate it. I'm gonna pretty much do the exact same thing. Uh, and then the thing that's actually really cool is like, let's say I go through and I delete my other fingerprints, which I will for you. And you'll be able to see that I'm able to unlock it with really, you know, uh, any of these thumbs right here with this one profile. So I'm setting it up, there we go. So this one is added, uh, I'm gonna go to done. Now that it's added in, I'm gonna name this one as both because we saved both of our thumbs with that one. Uh, for the right, I'm gonna go through and the left and I'm going to remove those. So originally I was able to unlock the phone with my right thumb, my left thumb, but now I have this one profile set up as both. So the next time that actually I go into the lock screen, if I was press my thumb onto it, you can see how that worked and it's super fast. I go through, I press my left thumb, it goes super fast. So it doesn't matter, you know, how you set it up. You can set it up to where one profile is set up for, you know, one thumbprint itself, or maybe the profile is set up for the person. So this way, person one, me, I can unlock it with either thumb. You know, profile number two could be the fiance. She can set up with both of her thumbs and that is how you're able to unlock your phone. The next setting to change is gonna be inside of the camera once again, but this time it's dealing with the settings for video. Now, once you go inside of settings, I guess one of the things I do wanna mention is if you are in Panorama or Pro or Live Focus or video, you'll notice that some of the settings is grayed out. If you wanna see every single setting and you wanna make any type of a change, make sure you're just on regular photo, then you go inside of your settings and everything is open for you to make changes. Well, once you go down inside of here, inside of videos for your rear camera, right out of the box, it's set up for the full HD. So this is really nice because you can do that super steady shot, uh, but you're not having the best quality. I mean, full HD has been around for quite a while and you do have a Samsung Galaxy device. You might as well go for the 4K shot. And if you wanna go even higher and better resolution and add more frames per second, you can do 60 frames per second shooting in 4K. And you can do that with your rear camera. Now, once you go on back one more time, you can head to your front facing camera and you can change your resolution here. So with the front facing camera, you can shoot 4K with the front facing camera. It's super crazy and amazing, but you'll notice with the uh, 4K, it's not able to do uh, the, the support for video effects, which is okay. Most people don't really care about the video effects. You just wanna shoot what you see and it's in 4K with the front facing camera. The next setting to change will be dealing with your always on display. So the way that mine is set up is that once it's inside of a black screen, uh, even though it's called always on display, mine is not set up to be always on. I don't want it to take up you know, battery life through the day. If I wanna know what's happening, I'll do a simple tap on the screen and I'm able to see what the date is, what the time, and any of my notifications. So let's go right back inside of the phone here and how you're able to change your always on display settings. Let's say you go inside of settings, uh, but I do wanna let you know that if you wanna find things a little bit quicker, go to the search button. So you can just do always on display. So inside of here, it was actually underneath the settings for lock screen. So with the always on display, this is where you can either have it on or off. And then you can choose how you want it to kind of operate when it is turned on. So you can have it as show always. So it's always showing you, but the thing is that it will take a little bit more battery or you can even have it show as scheduled. So if you want it to only show when you maybe look at the phone for when it makes sense, uh, then you can have it show as scheduled. So maybe you can have this one set up for maybe 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, it's the time that you're at work. And so for me, I like the option of tap to show. And then you also have more options for always on display, which is rotate screen to portrait or landscape. You can also show music information. You can have auto brightness on. So there's a little bit more settings that was also added in more than just, you know, when to see the always on display. So I would suggest this one here. So this way, if you are interested, just do a fast tap then you can see what you're looking for. Because if you're gonna be looking at your phone, that means you're within probably reaching distance of the device and it's a way to save battery. The next setting to change will be dealing with your clock with your always on display. Because sometimes when you tap the screen, you wanna see maybe something different than what came out of the box. If you go inside of the settings, you scroll down to lock screen. Underneath lock screen, you can see clock style. Now again, this is just underneath always on display. So clock style is here. And let's say that we wanna change it for the always on display. Now, I love the calendar. This is just a way to kind of visualize showing me what's up with the month. It tells me the day and, and, and the date. But when you go through here, you can see that you might've started with this one here. Uh, so you can, you can scroll through and you can change colors and you can change 
uh, you know, what you're viewing. For me, I like the calendar effect. Uh, again, it is all visual for me, so I'm just gonna hit on done and that's how you change your clock style. The next setting to change is gonna be dealing with your home screen layout here and dealing with if it rotates or not. So right out of the box, the rotate to landscape mode for your home screen is off. Now I have to say that last night was super nice. I was laying in bed, the phone was right in front of me and I was able to watch YouTube. I hit on the home button and it went right back over into my home screens in the layout mode or the landscape mode. So let's say that you turn this one on, which again, when you first get the phone, it is turned off. But once you turned it on this way, what's gonna happen is let's say that you are, I don't know, you're watching YouTube, you're going through your videos, you're, you're doing your stuff. Uh, and then once you're done with this, you hit on that home button, then you have your home screen that's laid out like this, which is what you're used to. And then you can pop over into the internet. Now, if you did not turn this on, what would happen is you would have to basically physically move your phone uh, the moment after. So let's say that you go through here, home screen settings, rotate the landscape mode was turned off. Uh, we went inside of YouTube. So we're watching YouTube, we're watching our videos, we're comfortable, we're lying in bed, maybe we're on the couch, get the home screen, and now you're orientated completely different than what you're just looking at. It just, it's just one of those things that is just a small little gripe. It's one of those things that's so small, but it makes a huge difference just to turn it on. Now the very last one that we'll talk about today is dealing with your wallpaper. Now with the Galaxy Note 10 and Note 10 Plus, you have a camera sensor in the middle of your screen on the very top, and you maybe want to conceal it, or maybe you just want to accentuate it. You want it to look good. Uh, one of the best ways you're able to hide this is by downloading a couple different applications. One of those is an application that is called Wallpix. And underneath the application of Wallpix, you can go inside of here. Uh, on the top left-hand side, uh, right over here, this is your little um, categories option. And if you scroll down, you can see where it's gonna say Galaxy Note 10. And then inside of the Note 10, you can choose any of these images and it's going to either hide or accentuate kind of what you see with that top camera sensor in the middle. Now the other application you can use, which is one that I like just a little bit better, is Reddit. So Reddit is also a website, but it is an application too. On the top, just search for Note 10 wallpapers. And then underneath the Note 10 wallpapers, scroll down, and when you see an image that is full screen like this one, this is where you can tap on it. So let's say that we like this Captain America. Once you tap on it, then you can see what it looks like with everything put away. Then on top right hand side, click on save. And then once it's saved, you can head back home, go inside of your gallery application, go to your Reddit application or the Reddit folder, and you can see that it's saved right there. Now I have a ton of wallpapers that is saved to my phone. Uh, and specifically, I made a folder for them that is actually called uh, wallpapers. And so in here, you can see that I have just a ton of them that is downloaded, and it's from the couple different applications that I just showed you. Now, you can also see too that I still have my protective film on the phone that's why you can see this very distinctively uh, right around the eyes and everything else but again super cool you got to make sure you get one of those amazing wallpapers you know if you're going to be using the galaxy note 10 or the note 10 plus but really this was everything i wanted to show you to to change immediately the moment you get the galaxy note 10 or the note 10 plus it was right around 20 or 21 different settings i hope that you guys have liked this video if you guys did please give this thing a huge thumbs up don't forget to head on subscribe you subscribe right over here the very bottom left hand side Share this video with your friends and family and social media sites. And other than that, I'll see you guys later.